So it's about 11.50 and we are just about leaving for the Independence Day Parade. We're hoping that we make it, but we are not sure. Chena is here, you can't really see her. Ebe is here, Ebe say hi. Um, Deborah is at school, all right, bye. So we're not sure if we're going to make it like in time to see the parade because we are sort of late. When we last went, we went really early in the morning. Like we woke up early at like eight, you know, got there on time. But yeah, we have some food and drinks and our face mask and identification of some sort, just in case of anything wow see how they just flooded this guy's windscreen in the back they are wiping it wow wow trekking down to Igbo Square hopefully <laughs> so yeah we're trekking down um, cars are not really allowed by but I guess people with special preferences and so that's why that's why we have to walk this way so yeah no we don't want thank you they're selling flags but we don't really want these guys don't get that we don't have money at all see me that colo is a taxi trying to come through that was showing just to me we brought no cash here so kind of relieves you of stress or worry about the taxi coming is the taxi coming so it relieves you of the stress of worrying about cash and stuff like that so yeah it's so beautiful. I showed it. I'm busy taking pictures. But I'm going to keep walking because I'm trying to conserve my energy. That's so cool. I hope I don't drop my phone. I'm scared of heights, guys. I'm not sure this is the best idea ever. We're going all the way to like the, that area, somewhere around there. And yeah, you can see that the masses. Why does it look like people are coming back and we're going? <sighs> I don't know, Sha. I don't know. So right now, we're waiting to cross over to the promised land, courtesy of the police people. <laughs> God forbid that this is our promised land, Sha. But yeah, we're waiting to cross over because they told us we couldn't cross right now. It's just been like five minutes and we're already tired of waiting. If the place is not open soon, we might just go. Yeah, that's true, Tina. Irritated. So that's where we mean. So there's another like block blockage there, and yeah. So just waiting to see if they will let us pass soon. So we can go and watch what is left of the parade. So um, we got to the checkpoint and they didn't let us in. They stopped most people and we were just standing like. But he said he wasn't going. Like they would eventually let us in. That was what he said because we asked but even how he told us to stay there was quite rude but we still decided to wait and then um whatever happened some guy was talking we don't really know what he was saying because he was speaking house and then the policeman 
so they're speaking Hausa. I think he was trying to say we should go, but we don't speak Hausa. So we were the closest to the police van. So he hit Uchena and then he hit me. Like he, he pushed us to go and everything. And he had his gun, like trying, acting like he was going to cock it and shoot. So we just moved like a bit further. We still tried to wait a bit, but it seemed like it wasn't possible. Today, Nigeria is 60, but. It's basically like being a fool at 60 because nothing like that nothing has improved. Instead things have gotten worse from like when our parents used to, you know, be in their heydays and all of that. All the hopes and dreams they had for Nigeria, I guess they've now just pushed it to dreams for their family. Nobody's thinking about the nation's good. Everybody just wants like my good you know the good of my family and all of that nobody's working for the general good of the country and i think maybe i'm going to take that same stance soon because yeah. i don't see anything good yeah. like what's fighting for anyway we're going home now we're going to go and rest it was an uneventful october 1st for us we didn't get to watch the parade that usually sparks hope in me but I didn't get to watch the parade, so I guess yeah, I'm not hopeful. They said it was going to be a, it is going to be a year long celebration, but so this is a story you're going to want to hear about the next few clips you're about to see. So Nigeria gained her independence in October of 1960, but Nigerians gained their independence in October of 2020. This was because the youths, the coconut head youths, the Indomie generation, the phone pressing generation decided to go to take matters into their hands and demand for their basic human right, which was the right to life or the right to live. And um, this was basically sparked by the killings that have gone on for so long by the special anti-robbery squad here in nigeria these guys are basically under the police unit but they have no rulership they, they kill people without any judgment of any sort and they get away with it so the nigerian youth came up with a five for five demand and they took it to the highest levels and yeah, that's what you're watching now.
I don't know 344 or so mm -hmm. on Friday mm -hmm. and it has been lovely we're ending stars. screaming we are venting all our pent up anger yes. here yep. let bad governance end in Nigeria yes. let police brutality end in Nigeria yes. the lazy Nigerian youth have blocked the As road they, public they holiday enjoy what? thank us later this comes after the 55 member African Union of doesn't want to join by mistake but go in the area and we must answer mommy let's cross now why should go people are turning up there oh i'm putting live from the car today no working today, but continue to protest against bad governance.
all right the story continues so this is tuesday the 20th of october 2020 and this was about the 11 or the 12 of the protest nationwide and the government is getting tired they are tired of pretending that they are listening or that they care and so they are trying to use all means necessary to stop the protest and here for us in abuja it was um, using thugs so these people came out about 10 or 15 minutes into our protests um, they came with machets they came with knives and um, they came to disrupt the protest and at first the protesters weren't having it because we were more in number or so we thought than they were but then we realized that there were about three or four more buses full of people here to disrupt the protest and so everybody took off on the first thing smoking they could find and um, you know we used our car as a getaway car opened the boots as you can see so that people could jump in and yeah and so everyone took off from that location now this would seem rather calm or it seems like nothing compared to what happened in lagos because on that same day a coffee was announced at 12 p.m to start at 4 p.m and was later moved to 9 p.m and before it was 9 p.m the nigerian army were commissioned to take the lives of protesters young old i don't actually care to know all I know is that Nigerian lives were lost on Nigerian soil by the Nigerian army and the Nigerian government's incompetence and wickedness. I don't know if that doesn't tell you about Nigeria. I don't know what is, but we're choosing to see more than that. We're choosing to see a greater Nigeria were choosing to continue to fight for the right of every voice to be heard or to count we are choosing to see a Nigeria where there is justice where there is fairness I think that is the least we can ask for as citizens of this country and so we continue the fight to end SARS to end police brutality in Nigeria to end bad governance in Nigeria so help us God